Hey folks, it's Craig with the Coastal Stoic. Actually from the west coast of Florida today over in Home Assassin, you know, scalloping in and tasty little creatures and hanging out here with uh, Beth and the pups. And that's where the, here's where the editing and the putting together of this part two of Times Change But Kids Don't is coming from, putting that together upstairs here. However, I hope you enjoy the talk. Hope you have some comments. Hit the like button if you like, um, if you like. And uh, I really appreciate that those of you who are listening um, and watching. I really appreciate that time you're taking, I'm trying to get them a little shorter to make it a little more accessible. But uh, enjoy the um, episode. It's actually episode seven or the second part of episode seven. So thanks again for listening and watching. And we will see you again soon. Hey, folks. Welcome back to the Coastal Stoic, or welcome to the Coastal Stoic, if this is your first time. This is part two in this week's episode. I wanted to make them a little bit shorter, give people a chance to see or not see. I'm um, just trying some new things with the camera angle here and here. Um, so I'm playing around. A little creative juice. If you enjoy this, uh, please go ahead and like if you would like to get more of these uh, discussions and be part of the discussion. Please comment. I would love to hear some comments. Um, I am absolutely not right on everything. And there may be people out there who have experienced uh, things such as myself. And I don't know. This dialogue is good. And if you enjoy it also, you're welcome to subscribe. Uh, thank you so much if you do or if you don't. Thanks for listening. Um, on the east coast of Florida, central east coast of Florida, there's a thunder boomer heading in from outside. So we will, from, not going to come inside, but it's from out, I can hear it outside, I should say. So part one was a story about my aunt and uncle and myself in a time where I needed people to help guide me as a young person. At 14 uh, was when I was this age, so 14 as we all know, is very uh, traumatic already, let alone having divorced parents. Uh, and if you want to have more on that aspect of it, you're welcome to, uh, um, uh, encouraged to listen to that first part. However, this part is really going to be focusing on how it is my belief that in a general sense, times are absolutely changing. But kids are pretty much the same. What I mean is this. When I'm out and about in the world as a teacher, and when I'm meeting new people, inevitably, invariably, people start talking about, what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? And it gets to me. And, you know, what do you do? I say, well, I teach. Oh, boy, what grade do you teach? I teach 10th, 11th grade. Uh, oh, my gosh. People look at me with horror in their eyes. And they say things like, oh my God, kids are so terrible today. Kids are so awful. Kids don't have respect. Kids are so... They very rarely have positive things to say about kids. And they have kids. Very often, given my demographic, who I am, my age at least, their kids are not necessarily school-age kids. They're older, and of course, oh, it's so much better when, when when my kids were around. They were so much more respectful. They listened more. They weren't on video. They, ah, it's just a bunch of bullshit. It's a bunch of bullshit. Kids have always been awesome, and kids have always been a challenge. There are documented examples of the president of Harvard back in the 1800s talking about how the young men coming to school, because women couldn't go to Harvard then, but the young men coming were lazy and they didn't want to work and they didn't want to write and they didn't want to do things. We've heard these gripes about young people forever, forever. The issue, and... When I say times are changing and kids haven't changed, of course, we've changed, of course it changes, but in general, 14 and 15 year olds today are very similar to 14 and 15 year olds back in the 70s, the 60s, the 50s, the 40s, the 30s. 
Here's what they need. They need love. They need respect. They need someone to listen to them. They need someone to validate them. They will be wrong. Guess what? Newsflash. I have been wrong. Anybody listening to this has been wrong. More good money that people listening to this have been wrong today multiple times. So if that's the case, if we're as adults wrong, we can't and we should stop busting on kids for being wrong. We should stop treating kids like they don't know what they're talking about. Now, granted, maybe they don't know what they're talking about, but the way we approach their naivete or their ignorance is needs to be shifted. We need to trust in them. I got news for everybody. The kids today will be in charge someday. They will be in charge. They will be the doctors and the lawyers and the engineers and the pilots and the electricians and the plumbers, and they will be the people taking care of the world. That's not scary. Come into my classroom and meet my kids that I teach. You would not be afraid. Do they do stupid stuff? Sure. They're kids, 14, 15, 16 years old. I don't expect them to do exactly what adults would do, but they need respect. They need validation. They need to be listened to. They need someone to freaking love them. Someone to give them guidance. Someone to give them discipline. When I say discipline, I don't mean punishment. Now, might they need to be punished? Sure. I don't know that they, actually I do know, I don't believe that they need to be, um, that violence needs to be part of this. But discipline, what I'm talking about, is the discipline to sit down and do something, to do it well, to respect the work and respect the thing that you do, to make yourself proud of yourself, to be proud of them and to show them that they can feel pride in themselves. Because when I go out in the world and when I listen to the world and I listen to people who are, and I've said this before in, in talks, people who have influence on other people, mocking kids, mocking what they don't know. Okay, maybe they don't know what the capital of Maine is. Maybe they don't know which is bigger between the Atlantic and the Pacific. Maybe they don't. I don't know that I need to mock them for that. Maybe I educate them for that. And I talked about this in a talk earlier on the island of Alaska. But what they do need is to feel that people care about them. When I was 14 and my world was upside down and we had very little money and I had very little guidance, I had very little control over myself and over the things I did and the things I said, I just didn't. And that went, went on for a while. But people such as my Aunt, Char my Aunt Shirley and Uncle Charles and others, parents of friends, youth ministers, ministers, my mom, neighbors, coaches, teachers. They gave me enough to keep me in check enough so I made it to the next level. And the next level was the army. And trust me, there were people there to provide me with discipline and guidance. Uh, drill sergeants, Sergeant Lewis and Laguerre and Daniels and others. I remember their names of 40 years later. We, what I'm saying is that kids today need the same things. The world has changed. Did we have the internet and cell phones and freaking cable TV and what? No! What, three channels and PBS or four channels, maybe if the rabbit ears were right for the beginning of it, black and white, then color, then cable eventually? Video games. Access with smartphones and computers to anything and everything. No. 
We didn't have that, so the world has changed. But they're curious about these things. We get upset because, oh, they're, they're on the internet, they're on their phones, they're on this. We strove for that too. Now we were outside and we did it for sure. We did those things because we didn't have access to the other. We aren't that different. What I would ask is that those of you listening to this, if you are a kid, talk to the people around you who are in authority, who are older. Tell them what you wish in a way that is not aggressive. And those of you who are parents, who are grandparents, who are teachers, who are people just in the community, don't automatically look at a kid and for crying out freaking loud, stop looking at a news story about some shithead somewhere who does some stupid thing because, and represent everybody for that. Kids are good. And if a kid becomes bad, it's not because he or she or they were born bad. They learned. They experienced things that took them to that place. And I've taught enough kids who people classified as bad and seen them as not being bad. Now, that is not to say that I haven't taught some kids who were actually pretty darn bad, but I've known a lot of adults who are pretty darn bad too. As a 14-year-old boy, my aunt and uncle gave me love. They gave me compassion. They gave me a sense of respect and taught me things. That's what we need to do with the kids today. So when you see a teacher and they say, oh, I teach, I hesitate. I would ask you to hesitate before you make a comment such as, Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Don't be sorry. We're grown ass people. We made conscious choices to be teachers, to be educators. We made the choices. Parents need to be part of this. Communities need to be part of this. But respect the kids. Respect the kids. Now, kids, if you're doing shit, that does not deserve respect, don't get pissed off if somebody tells you you're being an idiot because sometimes you're being an idiot. But hard to believe, I understand, but sometimes I'm being an idiot too. And I have yet to meet anyone who hasn't been that. Hmm, maybe my wife, but don't tell her because then she might get all full of herself. She deserves that. Anyhow, so I hope uh, you enjoyed this today. I'm going to cut it off here. Thank you very much for listening. Um, again, if you enjoyed, please uh, push uh, hit the like button. And I look forward to the next one. Thank you.